Hi, we are here with Ark, Lance and Ralph and uh, they, they are a poster about XMPP with Python. Ralph, tell me more about it. So uh, on this poster you, you see we mention uh, at least three, there are at least three uh, XMPP libraries uh, in, for Python. Um, we, uh, we, we show the, the three prom uh, most prominent ones. Um, there is one for there are two for regular Python. There is one specifically for Twisted, and um, yeah, depending on your yeah your preference, you can can choose uh, either one of them. And XMPP is a technology to do uh, structured information exchange. Uh, it's XML based. Um, it has a server architecture that is very similar to email. So every client connects to a particular server and then traffic is moved between servers um, we we have uh, instant messaging as, as as the most prominent uh, known use case can you send videos uh, you know um, there is there is a, a, a specification for media um, set up it's called jingle mm -hmm. it uh, it was was designed um, a couple of years ago, in collaboration with uh, with, with Google, they, they started uh, the name Jingle. Uh, we specified it more uh, gen generically in uh, in the XMPP Standards Foundation, and um, and then it's now an open uh, specification used uh, in, in in many other projects. Google Hangouts is based on XMPP, as an example. Yeah. Um, we use GTalk to do audio video chat. That's XMPP. Open standard and it's used everywhere. Yeah. yeah, Hangouts isn't a standard yet. Google just invented it, so we gotta get into the standards uh, standards process and probably make it generic again. Yeah, you know? and, and then there's also uh, Jitsi. Uh, it's um, you know a, a video conferencing system. Uh, it also supports uh, other uh, open protocols, but uh, it prominently also has a Jingle support. So a lot of people probably know XMPP as by its former name, Jabber, and think of it mainly as a chat protocol. But the truth is that you can do a lot more than just chat. You have publish, subscribe, you can do video, audio uh, session negotiation, uh, you can do service discovery, figure out what capabilities an entity supports. So it's evolving protocol. I'm sorry? It's evolving protocol. Yes, yes. And so you can do more than just send little instant messages across. You can do full machine-to-machine, -machine, uh, very complex operations. And you can do it federated between different domains and different organizations, and it just works. So. One of the newest applications is uh, using it in a web browser through WebSockets. Uh, we had various means of doing it in a web browser previously, like Bosch, which is much like Ajax or Comet. Um, WebSockets opens a whole new thing. Um, Lens is actually the editor of that uh, internet draft. Mm -hmm. Yes, so hopefully that'll be standardized into RFC pretty soon, but uh, that's still in development. But several servers are already implemented, so you can do it now. Yes. Um, one of the big points of XMPP is that it's federated, open federation, much like email. Um, you don't need to have any special agreements or sign special uh, API contracts or service fees to send email between domains. You just have a domain name, you have a DNS record, and it just works automatically. Um, XMPP works the same way. Uh, instead of an MX record, use a service record, but you can anyone can host their own service on it in their own domain and interact with you know GTalk. So if a user has a Gmail at Gmail uh, account, they have an XPP account, and they can interact with the, your custom services. So the other thing that goes with the federation is that XMPP provides very strong identities. Uh, unlike email, where you can spoof who has sent a message, XMPP. Uh, includes authentication so you can rely on what it says uh, who sent it. And so if you wanted to build on XMPP, that's one of the things that it brings to the table is you have the federated strong identity that you don't have to build that into whatever it's app. Very important. No, no. Yeah. Uh, one use case, for example, on the web uh, it would be publish subscribe. So you have XML content, XMPP is XML. Uh, the web browser, as a XMPP client, subscribes to content. When that content's updated, you receive a copy of it in real time. You don't have to pull for it. You don't have to, you know, request an RSS feed. 
the usually Atom uh, is a container for microblogging or any form of data you, you'd, you'd use for general web use. Um, just gets pushed to you in real time. And you don't need, unlike uh, PubSub Hubbub and uh, other HTTP-based uh, systems, you don't have to run a web server to be a subscriber. Uh, your mobile phone or, or tablet. So tablet. I, I have an example here. Um, there is a server-side component that uses the Twitter streaming API to uh, to subscribe to particular uh, uh, keywords on Twitter. And every time um, a tweet is, is, is written, um, it picks it up and sends it to a so-called publish subscribe node. And this web client uh, uses is based on Bosch. Um, and it, it subscribes to that particular node. And um, in real time, you will see all the matching um, tweets show up on this display. You can use it for a back channel at a conference, or if you want to follow uh, PyCon from the audience, uh, you could use something like this. And it's, it's only a few lines of JavaScript to be doing this. Great. Yeah. My, the last time I wrote a JavaScript client for XMPP, it was about 50 lines of actual code um, and is extremely simple with WebSockets. WebSockets is much cleaner, so we prefer it over Bosch. It's yes. the next up and coming. It's not quite standardized yet. Um, they were still. Be soon. Um, actually, beginning of PyCon, you had uh, uh, the little meeting with the IETF working yes. group on that, uh, working out some of the, the French edge cases, like uh, you know what elements go and where. And, but uh, it's usable, and we are using it. Um, and it's really enabling a lot more. Uh, also, Bosch had a few compatibility issues between different browsers, like different versions of Internet Explorer might have trouble connecting. Um, I, th I believe uh, uh, there were libraries that worked around those, mm -hmm. yeah. like Strophe. Strophe, Strophe yeah. yes. But WebSock is, is clean, it's a standard. Yeah. So um, it's also much faster to connect. And works better with mobile devices. So, great. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you.